Yeah, yeah, it's changing now. Okay, beautiful. Um, so yeah, the, the COVID situation here is pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, everything is still closed. We can't even uh, go out shopping or basically the only thing we can do is get a coffee inside and then walk out as soon as we can. Really? Um, yeah. What about, yeah, where are you? I'm in New Zealand right now. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Wait, wait, is there like no COVID there? There's no COVID. We're, we're literally living completely opposite lives. I came from LA though. So, you know, I've been living the, that as well. The COVID life. I've been living the COVID life. Um, and I actually quarantined uh, two weeks just now in like a, so the government makes you quarantine two weeks when you land in the country and the military basically takes you to a hotel and you're in isolation. The military? Yeah. They're really nice though. Like everyone's super nice. <laughs> Badass. It's, yes. Um, and then, uh, you know, you get three COVID tests and, and they give you three meals a day. And I was really fortunate because I was able to get outside for about an hour a day and not everyone is really able to do mm. that. So I'd be walking, you know, for an hour and then be creative. I had, you know, my little studio set up in, in the hotel room and, you know, made are it you work. Working on, uh, are you working on something there? Uh, yeah, like uh, there's, yeah, I am. And I have down there as well because it's COVID free so I can play shows there um, although I've heard that the States is opening up really soon too which I heard you know, June, June 14th or something like that I heard yeah um, June 14th I think that's what I heard too if the cases stay down uh, but I want I want to know more about uh, that thing you're working on are you working on something like I should know about I mean yeah, like I am crying. I mean, like, I'm not sure like how much I want to announce right now, but there is uh, music. <laughs> no shit, that's music. <laughs> <laughs> There's music and um, I've been working on it. You know, when we locked down last year and we stopped touring, I kind of, you know, it, it was really sad because as you know, you and I both tour really heavily. Um, and I have toured heavily my entire life. And so to stop that and completely do a 180 on my lifestyle was really shocking. Um, and I'm sure yeah. you feel the exact same way, like super yeah. shocking and having to create, you know, an environment in something completely different that we're really, really not used to maybe more so than people that aren't tour artists, uh, was, was, was weird. But the good thing about us, and I was thinking about this at the beginning of, of when COVID started, is because we're so used to being shipped around everywhere and you know, getting put in this room and that room and now we're here and now we're there. We're very adaptable people. So mm -hmm. uh, there, there's like a strength uh, that I found in knowing that I could adapt really to any situation and kind of like, you know, have this metamorphosis into where I needed to be and make use of it. So, you know, Absolutely, I find... Yeah. And I find it really hard to create on the road, I think. And we've talked about this before, but when you're producing uh, versus DJing and playing shows, it's like two separate sides of your brain. And to be creative, personally for me, I need to be you know, in, in my room uh, contemplating things and, and, and being quite introverted. Whereas playing a show and being out and about and backstage is a very extroverted thing. So it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to switch between the two if you really want to channel. Would you, say you're, would you say you're more of an introvert or an extrovert? I think I'm an introvert, but I think um, when I'm on stage, I'm an extrovert, which is interesting. Yeah, I, I don't think it's black and white per se. I think some people are both in a way. Yeah, um, yeah I think um, I get overwhelmed, you know, and I've had to train myself over the years uh, in being more social and, and dealing with those situations. Um, but if I had it my way, I probably wouldn't be out at parties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I thought about play, it's, it's probably why I play them, you know, and I don't, it's probably why I like being behind the decks. <laughs> Some people get a lot of energy from being around other people, you know, like they get energized by being at parties and, and being around like but a bunch of people but i for me it's always draining i always have to recharge in my room alone yes the recharge thing is a is a huge thing and um yeah. it's something that <laughs> when everyone's like oh you've got to be locked up in your room alone 
indefinitely. Yeah. I was like, great. <laughs> cool. Awesome. I can, I can do that. <laughs> I mean, that's what we do when we're wrong. You know, I think you and I are pretty similar with our writing processes. You might yeah, be. I, I get a lot of inspiration from being on the road though. So um, right. I, I totally feel you on, on wanting to be in, the, in one place when you're writing. And mm -hmm. I agree on that. But for me, I do miss, I did miss seeing people and like different cultures and different cities and, and just having different experiences all the time. That really inspires me. I don't know if that's something that you relate to. Um, I like, I do miss seeing my friends mm -hmm. you know, when we would bump into each other in China or when we're in Amsterdam, yeah. and, you know, it, it, you know, it's great to see you in a random country and all that. But um, when I'm writing, I'm not so much ex uh, inspired by the exterior. I'm very, very inspired by the interior of my mind. So um, mm -hmm. it's about, you know, getting to this point where I'm pulling a lot of truths out and uh, you know, it's, it's very therapeutic for me in that way. And uh, you know, uh, being on honestly, being very honest with myself and um, yeah, I, yeah I, I think, uh, I think my environment when I'm touring, I'm, I'm in extroverted outward mode. So right. when I come back home, that's when I can really pull something real. I yeah. get that. For yeah. me, it's, when I, there is some, some weird sadness to it sometimes when you're touring, right? You know? Yeah. There's some, I mean, I think we've spoken about this too before. Yeah, it's beautiful in a way, but it's also kind of bittersweet. It's all very temporary. You're, you're in city, in one city uh, for a night, and then you're off to the next city. And I guess that feeling of, like you said, being shipped around yeah. can be terrible at times. Um, but Especially also as a give, solo artist. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, yeah. But it does give me some sort of melancholy and nostalgia related to those moments. Like when I saw you in China, that, that one random night, you know? Yeah, that was... <laughs> it was so much fun. And it, it was so much fun, yeah. It's such a fleeting moment, but it was, yeah. it was beautiful because, you know, for, for, for a moment we felt like... Uh, you know, we recognize each other and felt like home for a second, you know. That's exactly right. Like when I see you or someone, you know, like that, who's a familiar person to me and I'm in a completely foreign country, seeing you kind of, it's like this exaggerated feeling of how much love I have for you because it does feel like home. You know what I'm saying? Like when you yeah. don't see your parents for a while and then you see them again, it's like this, you really appreciate it. And um, I think, I, I do feel like having that familiar, a soul or person that you can at least feel more yourself around or mm -hmm. kind of breathe around is really just like such a nice uh break yeah. and you know always being on and i think i i mean like i i know we both put a lot of pressure on ourselves when we're performing and in our art so able to also have someone that understands that on the road and we just see each other you know is, is a really nice thing to have mm -hmm. um because not everyone is, yeah. I want to ask you something about that. Like you, you said something about like you're always working, and I know you're always working. <laughs> yeah. I saw videos of you like working on the Red Box show, and oh. uh, and I really, I really relate to you in that way because I never stop thinking about you know shows and like what it should look like and how the music should sound. But I want to ask you this because. It's kind of for myself because I know how I think about it. And I want to know your thoughts. Um, were you able to really enjoy your Red Rock show in the, in the moment? Yes. And you, can, you can say no, yes. Or no. Yes. So when I'm performing, uh, the only way for me to like really perform is to let go. So all mm -hmm. the hard work and all the stress and all the, the non-enjoyment beforehand because I'm so prepared and I can, at that point, I've done as much as I can. And I know I've done as much as I can. And I know that like, when I'm old and I tell everyone, I put everything into it, I, I know the truth deep down. The only thing I can do when I get on that stage is get on that stage and like let it out and be as real as possible. 
And for me to be as real, it means to connect with people on a genuine level. It means to really feel the music that I'm playing. And my favorite thing in the world is being on stage. So um, that's when I feel most free. It's when I feel like, it's like this primal side of me comes out and I'm just mm -hmm. letting it all go. So I do, you know, but at the same time, I'm, uh, and I'm sure you feel this as well, when you're on stage, your brain does this crazy thing where, um, I don't know if we can say this, but like, so I've heard on hallucinogenics, right? When you take them, you notice and see every single milli detail of everything around you, right? And I yeah. feel like the same thing on stage where time is not really the same as it is off stage. You know, mm -hmm. when you're under a lot of pressure, I feel like I'm not sure how you are, but I'm able to kind of slow down and focus on and problem solve as I'm there. And it's just like highly complicated thing yeah. that my brain can sort simplify. Yeah. Very, very focused high. Yeah, I feel that. So it's um, like, I mean, I, I, I love being like performing. That's the best. And um, the Red Rock show leading up to it, it was months and months and months and months and months, you know, of, of not enjoying it. But I knew that it was going to lead to this one moment of euphoria that's mm -hmm. going to make up for the months and months and months and months of me having to deal with problems. Yeah. So it's like this, this, untouchable reward at the end of it that like is inexplicable and i don't think is that easy to get you know like you need to do that kind of stuff to to get that thing 100 percent feeling do you feel the same partially i i think you've been Wait, doing is, this for for is that a dog yeah sorry i, I live in a, in a noisy street no no, no I, I like it sorry yes keep going city. Um, but I think you've been doing this for a, a lot longer than I have. And I think I'm still really learning to, to get to that point where you go on stage and you don't think about anything else. Like I, I still catch myself thinking about, oh, was that the right visual behind me? Or was that the right lighting? Um, I mean, I'm still thinking about that too. Like, okay. yeah. I'm still thinking about that too. Uh, yeah. it's part of the hyper aware thing when you're on stage, mm -hmm. like it's like this split thing where you're letting go, but you literally see everything and yeah. same. I mean, like I'll get off stage and I will have had this most euphoric moment and then I'll turn to my production manager and be like, the flames came out at the wrong time, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, <laughs> yeah. at that, like one point and it's, it's something that's unavoidable that we're always going to feel and doesn't necessarily mean we're not enjoying our time up there, but it, if you are, this vision came from your head and your head only, of yeah. course you're going to notice that. Yeah. Like, I, I guess that's also the beautiful part where we're in a way we're, we're perfectionists and we want it to be as beautiful as possible for the people that get to see it. You know, it's, it's all love. Yeah. Um, but I, I do have to say like for that, for that Red Rock show, my, my entire family came out, like my grandma. I saw. My dad. Um, so there was just like, I just wanted to, I just want them to have a good time. And I did catch myself thinking, oh, I hope, I hope this is good. I hope this is enjoyable for them. And, um, but I honestly, I can't wait to play Red Rocks again. Did you, did you struggle with the altitude? Yeah, uh, actually it was really funny. You say that, uh, my singing. Maybe we should explain really what, what that is because. Okay. Think so yeah, the altitude. And I never thought about it because I also, uh, for whatever's coming out next, a lot of my vocals were recorded in Denver. Oh. So, uh, yeah, that's where, that's where uh, I've recorded a lot of my vocals. And uh, so the altitude thing's been something that I was never aware of before until I became aware of it. So basically for those at home who are watching this, altitude, when you're higher up, you're breathing, it's like harder to breathe almost, right? And something we have. I don't know what it is, but I felt it. Yeah, it's like when people are, you know, uh, climbing Everest or whatever, they have to really train for that because, you know, you have to be really fit and your breathing gets shorter and all this kind of stuff. So, if, if, uh, and, you know, I, I sing live in, in these kind of shows. And so singing 
I did a lot of vocal warm ups and exercises before I went on stage because I felt my voice, like my breath, or like me being able to sing a whole phrase, really, that was very difficult. And I had to like pace myself and like really think about my breathing whilst doing that. Um, and it's something that I, and that I always find in, in like a city like that. Uh, and it's even like hearing, right? Your, your hearing isn't as clear because I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that, but I, I did notice that, that I, I had to like breathe in oxygen for a little bit because I was oh. just like, I was just, my, my breath was, was weird. It was different. Maybe it was also stress, but it was definitely a different reaction to stress. Um, well, um, yeah, uh, in Aspen, there's like a place that people play. Uh, there's a venue name I forget, but after you play, they give you an oxygen thing tank to breathe because yeah. uh, it is like you, you probably did your head spin. Like, did you feel really lightheaded? I heard, and I was just kind of lightheaded and it, it was weird, but yeah, I'm not sure if it was the altitude. Maybe I was just very stressed out. I don't know, but it did well, feel different. Well, here's the other thing. The reason why also, look, I'm not going to lie. Red Rocks is the most pressure I've put on myself in my entire life. I will continue to do that every Red Rocks. And I try and explain how, mu how much bigger a Red Rocks show is than any other show in the entire world. And if you're going to like show your real vision, that's the fucking spot to do it. And mm -hmm. so you go all out. You lose money on that show. Like you put everything into it. I, I, I'm sure you do that. Mm -hmm. And like we're not just DJing. And that's the other thing. We're not just DJing. We're not got a USB and, you know, you're playing guitar. There's like vocals. There's, there's things that, that are, there's more variables to this show for people like us in electronic music. And so, of course, you're going to feel like that pressure because it's like added so many more added things. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and uh, like, so, and I'm, sometimes I'll watch someone set and they have great visuals and lighting and they're just DJing. And I'm just like, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Yeah. I wish I could just, you know, and sometimes, you know, we do do DJ sets at, at festivals like EDC or all that kind of stuff because it, it, it's appropriate for, for what we're doing. But no, when but it's not to disregard DJs or whatever, but it's yeah. just, I, I, I sometimes feel like maybe I should just like, you know, stop singing and playing guitar because it adds so much uh, difficulty and stress and also if you're physically sick or you're not able to do it it adds so much extra stress because you know if you wake up and your your voice is gone yeah or my wrist hurts from playing so much yeah I can't do the show you know and that's just a, a huge fear that's added to all the stress for me um, I mean he, he, here's the other thing and again like I came up as a DJ so again like I've just saying that DJing is any less than this I just we've just made it harder for ourselves because we have these added instruments and stuff so there's just like more variables that's it but like you know did you ever think about the fact that we do this combination and but then there's also bands out there that literally play like play guitar every night every all show. the time I, all I don't the time think I'd be able to do that that's, oh man when I saw I used to play in a punk band when I when I was younger and and lugging around an amp and my bass guitar and <laughs> from pub to pub in in our little car you know with 30 people watching like I I mean yeah it's you know again like I'm neither of us are complaining it's just obviously to function at like such so much with so much pressure and at this level and give the respect to the opportunities we've been given you know, I mean, I feel like everyone, way. I f probably felt the same way when I played in my punk band to 20 people, you know, we'll put the, and you know, uh, I think if you're just that type of personality, it doesn't matter if you're playing in the punk band to 20 people or you're playing Red Rocks, you know, to <laughs> an infinite amount of people, um, you're still going to feel the same way because you care that much about what you're doing and it means the same thing to you. You're just, you're just like in a different situation. So I think like, yeah you know um and honestly you know and i think i've said this to you before but uh you were one of the first people that i saw bring out the instrument to make it really work and and connect with people in that way and uh, it was very not everyone liked that first though not everyone liked it like 
I, I remember. I, I remember that too. Yeah, I remember people were like, you know, like the guitars don't belong on a, on EDC stage or EDM stage or whatever. Um, there yeah, was well, quite a lot of hate on it, but sometimes uh, when people don't understand something because it's new, it just means that it's new and it's a yeah. it's cha it's a challenge, and. What do you like if you want to do something like that? Why would you let that? You know, we I'm glad you never stop you because what you've done is you've helped evolve where electronic music's going anyway in what we do in our genre, right? You know, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of you to say, but like, but I don't it's know. true, it's <laughs> yeah. true. Like, and I've said this to you before off camera, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, because of people like you, other people are now feeling more comfortable to do that. Hmm. I think we're going to see a lot more of it after COVID because people have been sitting in their rooms playing their guitar and singing. Yeah. And, well, and I'm excited. Much more of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm excited. I got, I got two more, like, actually I got so much more at the Axe Cube. Um, and I feel like everything we're talking about is kind of a bridge to, like a very natural bridge to <laughs> what I want to ask. Um, um, so you, just to go back, a little bit about you know the Red Rocks production and all that. I actually remember uh, seeing your set at Coachella. Um, oh, think which Coachella? Twenty eighteen or twenty fifteen? Which Coachella? <laughs> uh, the one I played at. Twenty eighteen, wasn't it? You were playing at the that New Sahara, like the big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I played there like in the during the day, like at three, 3 p.m. And uh, it was my first Coachella, and um, did you love it? I I loved it, but I remember seeing your set later that night, mm -hmm. and something clicked. Something was like, something was like a wake up call. I was like, oh shit, this is how you do Coachella, right? Because like, stop. No, I came back, and uh, <laughs> and the stage was like completely different. I was like, wait, is this the same stage? Oh yeah. I spent all my money. I was in debt actually after that. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> and For real. I literally pulled up with like three USB sticks and a guitar, and it was, it was. I had the best time, but like, it was. If I would do it now, I would really. Um, yeah, that's right. That I I built an entire pyramid. Honestly, yeah. I was like, hey, my album just came out. I turned to Garth, my manager, and I'm like, I'm losing money on this show. I don't care. Yeah. Everything is going into building a huge weird pyramid visuals yeah. that look looks like <laughs> like um you know a sh like this i don't know but uh the vision came to and uh we built it but it was it was it was not easy and i appreciate you yeah uh, that saying was, that that was really sick um Thank you, you. want to know a secret i i the first coachella i played because it's two weeks right first day we pulled up with with like a couple usb sticks on a guitar and and the guitar transmitter, the wireless thing, it didn't work because we didn't even know that at festivals you need a special kind of wireless system. It, I just brought something that you can use in your home, uh -huh. like a guitar wire. And it was just like 10 minutes before we went on, we had no like real sound check and it was just so stressful, but we made it work. But next <laughs> guitar I got to play, I will make a pyramid. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> Sick. I love that. I'll come on and play cello. Hey, but I had a question actually, which uh, mm -hmm. this is going to be for the people watching. And I think it's like a very important question because you did bring up the, you know, and, and we've all been through this, but you know, this is a very simple and real example, um, not simple, but very real example of, of dealing with something. Um, when, when you, when you started putting things on the live side of your performance and you weren't getting the response that you wanted to from people. Yeah. Number one, I understand that that would be, that is very upsetting because you're putting your heart and soul out there and you really are trying. And mm -hmm. um, what advice do you have to people who want to put themselves out there? And then if they don't get the answer they want, how do you get them to, how did you push through? Yeah. And you kept your truth. You kept doing what you wanted to do. Good question. I, let me think about it. I, so throughout my career as Son Holo, 
yeah i've always done like um i've tried to do things that were not really there yet like i did weird weird things with the kicks and with the snares or like no snares and drops and yeah um, from the from the moment i started i had people like oh where is the snare or where is that sound or like this seems weird to me or this is too busy or um and then the guitar, guitar came out and people were like the guitars don't really belong on like an electronic festival or edm stage it's boring or it's a gimmick or whatever um i always felt this weird i mean of course it's in a way it sucks to hear those things but also it's challenging yes you know, when, when someone is trying to say oh you can't do that and then i'm like watch me you know yeah like, kind of motivate way it's, it's definitely motivating you yeah. can use it you can use it to either sing you give up that's the point when you you have to really dig deep inside and be like what do i want like yeah. what is what is what do i what i'm this is your art you're expressing yeah. yourself how and do I you want to do that anyone, people will yeah some understand and you know weird is just another uh it's just not a word for new, you know, everything is weird at first when it's new. Yes. Um, and I, yeah, it kind of inspires me to do, to do things that I love it when people have to listen to a song a couple more times, you know, like, mm -hmm. Oh shit. I get it now. Yeah. Then you've in some part of your mind. And, uh, oh, you know what I wanted to talk to you about or just compliment you on no. Did the, the live stream where you, did it in slow motion yeah like, or did, the, what did you was it slow motion or double time no it was, it was slow motion you had and you actually sped the tracks up and then dj'd them that fast yeah and you had to use like the fire and oh, i mean it, it, I, I work with my with my best friend thorwald on that like you know we just we were sitting down and, and we're like what can we do that's not done before and it's special and, I, and yeah. I was like we should do like a slow motion set yeah i thought first i thought maybe i'll just move very slow but then i was like wait what if we actually dj everything twice as fast and then yeah. slow it down um and it ended up being this real really surrealistic video of you know me like literally kind of floating and slow motion oh. while the track is actually normal speed because it's slowed down from yeah. sped up twice as fast whoa it's just it's yeah. honestly like when when i knew when i was told this I was watching it with Chet and he was like, uh -huh. yeah, he like sped up everything twice as fast. And they recorded <laughs> this DJ set spread up, uh, you know, sped up. Yeah. Um, and I was watching it and I'm just like, oh my God, the audio is real. This is like really yeah. real. Yeah. And like, I'm a big fan of that. That's <laughs> the, crazy the coolest thing. thing you did. Like not the cool, but it was, you know, it was so cool. I think I texted you about it. Um, the craziest thing is that I realized is that all the effects you, you add to the mixer, the reverbs and the bit crusher, they all get like, they also get um, slowed down by half. So they're all very spread out. Were so they low? Were they like sounding? Like I yeah, they, it's, it's really weird to just like the bit crusher just sound like different, but like really big and the reverb, like the, the space, uh, What's it called? The uh, oh, space, the space echo, the space echo. echo? Yeah. On the, or am on I the... like thinking of an Ableton preset? I don't know right now, but yeah. No, no, like the, wait, what's it called? Wait, I'm going to, it's called the. Uh... I think it's just called space something. Space. <laughs> the space. Yeah. Is it called space? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it just sounds so weird. <laughs> it was a very, very cool experience. And uh, it, it, sometimes you do something and it just, falls into place. I mean, I yeah. do a lot of things that don't work out and I write a lot of songs that are bad, but this kind of, this, this set was uh, something that really worked out. Well, yeah. you know, the, the reason why, you know, you, you are where you are is because, you know, you did do a lot of things that didn't work out, but you kept going. A lot of people stop at the first thing that doesn't work out. And yeah. That's well, another, it's another like little thing if anyone's watching and personally, <laughs> How long have you been doing this though? Like that's like, I don't even know. Uh, so before anyone really knew who I was, I was already doing it for 10 years. Right. I mean, yeah. And I can see that when you're DJing, like I see you like, yeah. it's so natural to you. I mean, uh, there's been times 
not anymore where I, you know, would place an after party and I had way too much to drink. And I was like, was I, and everyone's like, yeah, your mixing was <laughs> like super clean, but it's, it's just because I've been doing it for so long. Um, and you know, I've been in music for so long and there was years where it was, no one understood me, no one got me. And I still feel that way, you know, like even when I'm showing people unreleased stuff now, like I'm like, they'll get it, they'll get it, but they just don't get it now. And it's like, I know that. And it's like, cause it was 10 years of no, but I like every time I heard a no, I was like, all right. So, so I guess that means I just got to keep going. <laughs> so, you know, oh, and I say, I, I don't know. It's just like the, I try and say this a lot and I try and repeat this thing a lot, but you're going to hear like a, not, a lot of no before you hear one yes. And if you understand that and if you're prepared to work really hard and, and um, really know what your passion is, then you will hear a yes eventually. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was told I shouldn't sing, that my voice was bad. So what did I do? Okay, cool. I guess I'll just sing more. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like I'll, yeah. you know, uh, all or, the no's, they, use all the no's to like prove them wrong. Use them as like a motivation almost. That's what I do. It's the no's and the fails that make you mm -hmm. strong, like that get you to where you want to be. It's actually weirdly not the wins. It's, it's, it's for me, I, when I think back, it's the fails that are why I'm, I'm where I'm at. It's not the wins. The wins are. That's, that's what, so true. It's you not know, the wins. It's not the wins. The wins are like the stepping stone to the next lot of fails before you win. And people don't see that because what they see and what we do, it's like an iceberg. Uh, see the very little top of everything. And then there's just like so much that you don't see. You don't see the crying, the breakdowns, the loneliness, yeah. the self doubt, the almost quitting the, you know, um, you know, rejection. Um, people don't see that. They just see you on stage and, you know, they don't see the other thing that, you know, is, is obviously a more modern thing is the instant uh, opinions that happen very quickly on things. So it's, you know, oh, yeah. that especially now these days, it's like, yeah, you know, I, it's, I find it very hard lately to, to function in this world where everything is so bad good you know like it's it's yeah it's uh, i'm working but everything's like here's the thing and i i think this a lot because i i'm you know i'm playing some of my stuff to people and some people are getting it some people are not. I'm like, no one's gonna get it until they get it people don't get you until people get you and that's yeah. just how it's always been uh i don't know why um but it was you know 10 years of no one getting and then all of yeah. a sudden like the right people were like actually and so then people were like actually yeah and then they you know it, it, it's it's a weird thing but you it's know. exciting though it's exciting that you you were able to make something of your own vision and that eventually people got it i think that's i mean it's the same with you same thing yeah. But that, that's the, I think that's the most motivating thing for me. Like that's, that's my motivation for people to understand something suddenly and like, oh shit, that, mm. that's what he means. Anyway. Right. So that's your motivation. Yes. If my there is a, I was thinking about asking you this question. Okay. Are you, you can just like answer, answer Am this. Am I human? Are I you? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Are, if I'm you, are you? No. No. Are you still proud and happy with everything you've released, or would you like the ability to erase some songs? Absolutely not. I am so proud of everything I've ever released because mm -hmm. even if it's not what I would do right now, I know at the time I, I like. So this is something that I'm glad was said to me early on in my career, right? Because I'd actually made an entire album before I even did my first EP. Mm -hmm. um, so I have one EP and two albums, and then there'll be more things come you know but um yeah. anyway when before my first ep i'd done a whole album and uh i wasn't singing on any of it i was writing all the songs and i was trying to make like a club album because that's what was cool even though it's not what i gravitated towards and um i was sitting in my house with a friend 
And I, I played, you know, I, I, I spoke to him about this and I'm like, I don't understand why this isn't hitting, why I'm not, you know? And he said to me, and I, and I carry this with me to this day, every freaking day that I live, you can tell everybody in the world that you put all of yourself in something, right? You put your whole heart and soul into this. But at the end of the day, the only person, and I've said this earlier in the thing, the only person that's really going to know if you put all of yourself into something is you. And you're going to have to live with that your entire life. Mm -hmm. And so I lived my entire, you know, musical career like that. So when I look back to a song where I was like, oh, you know, that maybe now I wouldn't have chosen that snare or may maybe now like, I mean, I think my, vo my voice has changed because I've worked on it. You know, maybe now I wouldn't sing it like that. But at the time, that was my truth. And I, and, and I, I worked for that. And I, I you know, cried and sweat and all of that over this song. And, and there's this sense of pride and ownership over something that you worked that hard on and that yeah. you really meant, you know. It's like, it's like when someone buys you something versus when you buy yourself something, you know you feel this sense of just that's your baby. Yeah. You're definitely but, spinning some truth here. Like I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm like, ah, that is that's a great I way. Mean, it's, it. it's like, yeah. I mean, if, if you're writing something from a very honest place, it's, it's hard to, to really regret it because yeah. that, you know, that, that was a stamp in time that you lived and if you're being honest and you're making it with pure intentions and it, and it's pure art, then that was your self-expression. That was you expressing yourself at the time. Why would you change that? You know, or, and, and like time to figure that out. Like I, I went yeah. through stages where I was like looking back to like songs that were three years old and I was like, yeah, I would never release this right now. But like you said, like back then that was my truth. So yeah. I, but I definitely did go through phases like, oh, should I, you know, disown that? But then I realized I'm always going to be changing anyway. So like in mm -hmm. 10 years, the stuff I'm doing now is going to be old to me, you know? Yeah. So I'm, glad, like, you that. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you don't want to erase your songs either. <laughs> never. I mean, there are some songs I don't play live. Um, 100%. And I don't me. play them. Yeah. yeah. And people are like, why don't you play that song? And I'm like, I just, I associate it with something that I don't want to relive. And yeah. because it's such a personal thing and I, you know, write from something real, every time I'm playing a song on stage and this is the whole performance letting go thing, I'm brought back to that moment, you know, and it's real. And so like, I don't want to relive that. So I don't play it <laughs> or, you know, yeah. And, and, and I've explained that to fans in the past and, and, you know, occasionally if I'm drunk at an after party, I might <laughs> drop it. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, you know, there's some songs that, that I, I've pushed to the side. But yeah. again, you know, I, like it, it doesn't mean I don't love them. It doesn't mean that I, I regret them at all. You know, I'm proud of everything I've done. So you've got to yeah. be. Sometimes I don't play songs because I just don't relate to them anymore or they, yeah. they don't. They're not a part of me anymore. Um, but that's fine. That's it's fine. Good. And that's, you know, the beauty of MP3s. <laughs> right. Um, I, I wanted to ask you one more thing. I don't know how long. I mean, I, I feel like I could be talking to you for like two hours if, if I wanted to. Stop. You know? um, Stop. But um, EDM, huh? The, the, the term EDM? The term EDM. I was oh, thinking... Yeah. And uh, because I found you on, on SoundCloud. Do you remember the SoundCloud days? Oh, yeah. I, that's how I found you. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful that, time. Was right? it like 2014 or 2015? Yeah. Yeah. That's also when I kind of started doing this. Like, um, yeah. I, but I reckon. I reckon. <laughs> I reckon that you, you've been, you probably DJed way before the SoundCloud days. Yes. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, tw like 2000. 2009 mm -hmm. um, but ever since like I found you on SoundCloud I guess everything was still labeled EDM but nothing really sounded like EDM to me uh, you know, yes and crazy shit I actually got in trouble once because I was at a conference 
and it was like the conference was called like EDM something, and oh, I didn't know I didn't know that. <laughs> and you said you said something bad about EDM. Yeah, I mean, I just spat what I thought were facts, and I think I offended half the room. Yeah, no, we're uh, not, I think this is interesting. We're not here oh, to offend. Cool. I think it was called EDM biz. Anyway, uh, you know, it was like me, Jaws, like. Paul Oakenfeld, like a bunch of people on this panel. And they, you know, what do you guys think of the term EDM? What do you guys think of EDM? And everyone was like, oh yeah, it's cool. And I, I, I just like, you know me, I can't lie. <laughs> I'm, it's just very difficult for me. And you know, even my face was just like, hmm. And the guy, you know, the moderator's like, oh, Alison, it looks like you have something to say. I'm like, oh yeah, I do. EDM is a terrible term. It is a, this crazy, like, compression of so many different genres it's 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 not right like techno yeah. is not edm trap like edm is this umbrella it's so many you don't like call like funk and rock and like indie music like i don't know yeah, analog a adm like i don't know mm -hmm. but and so for me when edm was starting out in australia the term edm meant uh main room house Mm -hmm. So when people kept saying, oh, you play EDM, you play EDM. I was like, I, I don't though. Like I'm, I don't think I play EDM. And this is no disrespect. Like in my mind, EDM was a genre. Mm -hmm. It was not a term for electronic music. For me, I, I just say call what we do electronic music. I don't say EDM because right. um, there's, there's a lot more to what we do than dance music. And yeah, I've I've been thinking about this and I was like, what, what makes EDM EDM then, you know, because there's so many subgenres now and like, I guess it's also oh, very, it's, it's an artist thing to not want to be tied down to a genre, like no one so, wants it's, to. No, it's not even that. EDM came after all these genres. It wasn't never a term bef before. There's, these subgenres have always existed. The term mm. EDM came when, when, when Dead Mouse said it, when he... I think Dead Mouse came up with it, you know, respect. We, we all love Dead Mouse, but I'm saying like he came up with this term and, and I really hope this is right. So please fact check it before this comes out. But um, what I feel like it did is it condensed all these like different sounds into one squash definition. Yeah. And there's so much complexity and depth and history to all these different genres that to squash them under this one umbrella to me felt like it was almost cheapening, you know, mm. what we did. And, you know, I'm not talking even me, like, I mean, Flying Lotus, who would someone, why would someone call it? Like in my head, Flying Lotus is not. No. Yeah, EDM. but, 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 but you, and even though he is not, you think the term EDM grabs Blue is not EDM. Like that, yeah. You know, in my mind, EDM is like a only because, the, and I, I might be also very wrong, but this is just how I feel. When I started out, EDM was a genre. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So well, I think I, for a lot of people it is. It, for a lot of people, it is a genre. Yeah. Like, oh, you like in, you like EDM. Yeah, um, and so so to say EDM and, and use that term all the time. Oh, she's an EDM DJ. I'm like Jesus. Uh, well, yeah. I write I mean, my I'm, songs. I play instruments. Uh, this yeah. I'm an electronic artist. I feel like that. Like, and that's I don't know if that's how you feel, but it's it's like uh, I, I, DJ. I it's like well, then you don't know what I do. No, I, I totally see where you're coming from. I yeah. I do uh, when I'm at at customs and I try to get into America and they ask what I do and they say, oh, so you're like a EDM DJ. Yeah. I also just, feel like that's not really the term I associate with, but. No, um, you're, you're an electronic artist. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's on, different. On one hand, I, I do feel like we're, I'm, I am constantly, uh, and I've, I think I'm okay with it now. Like I'm, I am still labeled as an EDM artist and I can play guitar as much as I want. I will still be EDM DJ. It's fine. Yes. Like, um, but it, I, I guess I do want to build my own. I'm like, okay, if, if I'm EDM, I do want to build my own EDM, you know, yes. like, that's how exactly. I see it. So like my secondary thought to what I just said was, yes, that's how I feel. But 
I'm happy to pick my battles and that is a battle I don't need to fight and I don't care about it that much. Exactly. That's how I, that's how I feel. And, um, and when I someone's like, you, you're, yeah. you know, I, you work, you play EDM. Sure. That's yeah. If yeah. that's, if that's how it helps people understand and like, uh, you know, what we do and, and also the terms evolved so much since, yeah. you know, when I started, like just I, sometimes I just have to be like, get over it, Alex, get with the times. Like that's yeah. what people think it's called when, like, I, I also think that term is more uh, used when people don't, aren't involved in electronic music and don't actually know. And they, they think that's Skrillex. Right. That's exactly. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, that's so e yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, so EDM. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Sure. Sure, mate. Yeah. <laughs> EDM. But that, but, you know, also, there was also a time where all electronic music was called dubstep, you know, like, yeah. Oh, so or, or how house. Oh yeah, house. Oh, she's, yeah. she's a house DJ. Am I? Ooh, that's pretty good <laughs> to, to every single house DJ out there. I'm very sorry. You know, no. Sometimes when I talk to people like at a at like a coffee shop and then we we talk, we get to into a conversation about what we're doing. Yeah. They're like, oh, so you're like a DJ, and I say, yeah, like, oh, it's electronic music. It's like, oh, so like house house music, like like yeah, kind of. <laughs> I mean, people being like, oh, yeah, she's like a techno DJ. Oh, oh yeah, okay. she's a techno DJ, yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That, that, if that's a, you know, so like, again, like, pick your battles. It's, it's like, like, it's not that deep, you know. And then they'll watch the show and they'll be like, oh, that, I guess that's what EDM is. They don't associate EDM to what we do because we didn't grow, like, that's not, we were, they're not as, like, immediately affected by it. So they're just like, oh, that's it, EDM. Yeah, if, it, if we would have it our way, we would just not talk in genres anyway we'd just be if like, i had it my way i'd be like actually i make a uh, future <laughs> future <Lyrical>. classical future <laughs> classical <laughs> in, a, in a way we all make future classical don't we yeah yeah because if mozart <laughs> was, was born now i don't know if mozart would be like writing like, dude if if beethoven was born now his shit would be hard <laughs> He was like, he was slap. I was saying, like, like that. I mean, <laughs> that is that could be EDM. Like, if you, like, it is EDM. You know what? <laughs> Beethoven is an EDM DJ. Yo, Beethoven. Beethoven. That would be <laughs> <laughs> Beethoven. <laughs> yeah. Um, Beethoven. Anyway. Um, we've been talking for like an hour now. Well, before we go, I just want to quickly ask you about Bitbird. If no one knows what Bitbird is, it's your label. And the thing that I love about this label is the curation of the artists that you have as part of the label and how talented they all are. And, and they all um, fit into this sound that I feel like you have mentored for. You know, and it's really awesome. And, uh, you know, the compilations that you release and, and the exposure you give to these up and coming artists is just like, you know, very, uh, it's, it's amazing. And, uh, you. you know, what's, what's coming up with that right now? Wait, I have two more questions. And then <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Some, something that always inspired me is seeing, uh, people do something I've not heard before. And yeah. And you know, we, we talked about this earlier, how hard that can be to, yeah. you know, to, to get your point across in a, in a, in a world where everyone kind of relates mostly to things they know. And so yeah. when I hear this, these weird electronic songs, oh, this is guy, former hero, he just amazing stuff. Um, or like back in the days when, you know, Bo Damien. Oh, um, I'm such crazy, a fan. He did crazy things. Oh and, man. And, Listening to that, what was that song that I uh, I was listening to it yesterday? Sine waves, yeah, yeah, probably, oh, yeah. Sine waves. Oh my god. We really, we just really want to support, um, yeah, artists that are doing something uh, new and innovative. I, it inspires me to to give them that extra push for other people to see them, you know. And I, yeah, there's a lot uh, of love and respect and good vibes uh with what with yeah, I, I hope so yeah we're, we're, i'm also not, like, i also really don't want to like claim them or be like you know uh 
you belong to Bip or not. It's really, it started on SoundCloud. It was just a platform to lift up and coming producers up. Yes. Then like, you know, fly yeah. freely. Uh -huh. and, yeah, and, it's great. Yeah. Oh, one Thanks more. Thanks for, for checking that, the Bitbird stuff out. Oh, I, I remember I told you I um, had a very euphoric moment listening to one of the, the compilations. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I don't know if you want to talk about that in this. No, <laughs> but um, yeah, amazing. That's beautiful. I think that's beautiful that, that people make memories. <laughs> yeah, I have very strong memories of that. Um, album, your album. Oh, there's yeah. a lot, there's a, there's a, how many tracks do you have on this album? 20 tracks, 20 tracks. Yeah, 20 tracks, that's yeah. amazing. I've, uh, I've got a collab with, uh, with Rivers Cuomo from Weezer, which is wow. so fun. I don't know how that happened. Like He just hit me up on Twitter saying, hey, I love what? life with the song. And it was crazy, yeah. And I was like, holy shit, I've been teaching your songs to, to kids as a guitar teacher, and now like I'm making a song. Damn, like that's and, uh, insane. I, I recorded this album in LA. In, yeah, in I remember the house. My dog yeah. was there. Your dog was there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> my dog was humping someone's leg. Oh, it was my leg. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> um, um, and and uh, what we, it's it's a very um, I mean as we we all say that it's a it's a very personal album. It is a really personal album, and there's some songs on there that really helped me. Uh, you know, move on from certain things. Uh, yeah. And um, it's, for me, album one was kind of experimenting with this, you know, guitar indie sound in EDM. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For me, this, this album, Maybe You Okay, also mm -hmm. known as album two, is, um, is me being more confident in that space, I think. That's amazing. Uh, you know, it's my sound. It's, it's what I do. And uh yeah, I, I, I can't wait for people to hear it. It's when, really when's it coming great. out? Uh, it's, it's coming out May 21st. <gasps> so soon. You're yes. going to have to send it to me early so that I, I can... I definitely will. I, I will. Even though yeah, I think it's scary. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm the least scared. You don't need to be scared around me. I, I already sing your praises, so... Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I had a... Thank you for, for this wonderful conversation i mm. i was kind of nervous at first because i was like okay how what's how are we going to do this i'm just going to talk but we just talked yeah. and it was great and i think we talked about very interesting things good i will i mean i hope people get something out of this and if you're watching thanks yeah thanks <laughs> to all of you um i don't know if, how sh how should we end this uh, uh okay i'll do it hi i'm san holo Alison wonderland um, I'm in Amsterdam right now. I'm in New Zealand writing beautiful songs. Uh, and we love you guys. And <laughs> maybe one day we'll, we will collab. One day we will. Hey, it's gonna happen. I'm, I'm honestly mad we haven't. So this is me being like. Wait, is this you being me saying yeah. that? Uh, <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Oh, that's good. I can put words into your mouth right now. Yeah, I really want to lab with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I'm sure it's going to happen. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, again, thank you. You're amazing. You know, and like, just to get back to that, like, you know, it shouldn't be forced. It's, I, I know it will happen. Yeah. It's just, it's just not going to be like, oh, we should no. collab. It's going to happen. One day we're going to be in the same place and we're like, hey, let's write a beat. And then like, you know, it's oh, I know that the best type of stuff comes very organically, and that's uh, that's what it's when it's very magical. Yeah. Um, but I love you lots, um, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, I like I like your purple t-shirt. Let's go today. <laughs> this is getting so awkward now. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we should end this because uh, I'm not in control of my own voice anymore. <laughs> Um, but, but for real though, like everyone, thank you so much for, for watching. And I, I don't know, the host is also on this call. I think you should give us some, uh, um, like, how do you want us to end this? I'm just going to do this. <laughs>